photographer Bill Miller is an artist who reaches out. So when he asked us if we were interested in documenting his photo essay, Ink, we thought it would be just about art. But Bill's essay is more than that. It's art that wants to change your mind. How tattoos came up at all was that I was working on another photo essay, and it had to do with how people use the American flag. And not so much in, you know, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, that type of thing, but more uh, inappropriate or unusual ways. So I was out periodically taking images of how people would use them as diapers, curtains, uh, any number of things. Not so much disrespectful, but almost as decorative. Part of that whole process was, well, you know, I've seen a lot of, and in, in my mind at the moment, it, it, at that time, it had been military tattoos, and a lot of them had American flags. So I was saying, okay, if I'm going to talk about using a flag in a different way, let's, I need a picture of a tattoo. And the more I looked around at tattoos, the thought came into my mind, uh, you know, the, the project on American flag is interesting, but it really doesn't have a human aspect. And I thought more about it, and I thought about uh, tattoos in general, and I thought, you know, I think I want to change this. And uh, put aside all the files on the American flag, and decided I'm going to start shooting tattoos. Now, having met several people already who have tats, or just people I've known over the years, um, they've told me about bias. They've told me about how people have reacted negatively to their tattoos. Uh, and I thought, I think this is really where I want to go with this. I, I think it's important. Uh, it's an important story to tell, particularly because we live in a small community here. And unlike Portland, which is very open, more unbiased towards tattoos, very common thing. Here in this small town, tattoos are seen in a very different light. They look at me like I'm a bad mom for getting oh. tattoos. Like, you know, couldn't you have gotten your son something instead of getting yourself a tattoo? Great How would you feel if you, I don't know if you have kids, but you sent your kid to school and their teacher was tattooed and pierced? Um, you might not care so much. Actually, it wouldn't bother me. <laughs> but many people would. Like I said, I worked construction for 13 and a half years. A lot of the presentation of who I was, you know, earrings was pushing it. A lot of the high-end clients of like the West Hills and Portland that really looked down on tattoos and piercings as bad, like you're some kind of, you're affiliated with the wrong kind of people. I always felt like I don't want to have something where people can look at me and judge me. And that was my 40th birthday present. It's a Celtic heart. It has some irises on it. Those were my grandmother's favorite flowers. For years, I only had tattoos that could be covered by my sleeves, by a t-shirt, just because the type of work I did. I didn't think it was appropriate. You know, I was a cop for a lot of years. I didn't think exposed tattoos looked good in uniform. But let me ask you, you were telling me about, because you're a physical therapist, right? Massage, massage therapist. therapist. Yeah. But you were telling me some of your clients don't necessarily respond well. Well, I, I had one, one guest in particular that she'd been a regular guest of mine for several years. and. Uh, prior to getting this tattoo, and she came in one day, and I'm looking at her intake form and asking her if anything had changed in her, you know, health history or in her life. And she's like, no, but I see something's changed for you. And at first, I didn't have a clue what she was talking about, and she pointed at my tattoo, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you haven't seen that one before. She's like, no. And <laughs> just the, the demeanor just totally, just so surprisingly changed, and that really just, you know, drove home the the bias in my mind because my tattoos were always covered. It really kind of surprised me because we already had a, a strong professional relationship and obviously I changed a great deal in her eyes. Almost instantly. Just as soon as she saw the tattoo. So I've, I've got it in a way that I can present because I speak at conferences mm -hmm. that people that aren't comfortable with tattoos don't have to see them. Okay. Right? It's not that I'm, I'm specifically trying to hide it. Um, but at the same time, there is wisdom in, um, you know, I have a, a dragon, you know, coming out of my neck, eating my face tattoo. I'm just going to limit my job possibilities. <laughs> you so, think? Uh, I think that every person who does whatever job is a human being doing a service or a job or whatever that is. And they're of no less value than anyone else. So when I looked at tattoos, 
I thought that same thing. These people are just like me. They're just like anyone else you see in the community. And I think that because they have a tattoo isn't any reason to look down on them or to treat them differently or to think of them differently. If there's something with a daffodil on it, it appeals to my mother. And chances are she has it in her home. And the P is because my father grew up in Eastern Oregon. His father was a minister, but also did pea farming. The pea pod came around because my sisters, you know, Rebecca, Deborah, and me. Peas in a pod. Peas in a pod. So there are three peas in our pod. We had it done in August in 2009, and it was a surprise. We kept them covered and hidden until Christmas. Oh, really? And then we all displayed them as the Christmas present to mom and dad. And how did dad react? He just went, oh, your mother's going to want that's your grandma right marine corps yep and that, that the tell white, me about that one. okay my, that looks like a holiday tattoo my uncle was in the navy back in about the just after world war ii during the korean conflict and he had this hula girl on the inside of his arm i think it was on it and when i was a little kid i always thought that was the coolest thing <laughs> he had to, he had this hula girl you know on his, on his arm so when i was able to get a tattoo old enough to get one i liked that hula girl so I got the hula girl on my arm that's the only reason but she was topless for years and of course as my grandkids got older and older <laughs> they're like telling their friends my grandpa's got a naked girl on his arm so I had these recolored about oh six seven years ago so while you're at it I said put a top on her <laughs> I got the tattoo as a Mother's Day gift five years ago and my daughters and I shared it and all three of us got the same tattoo when I was a young child, the word Aya was an endearment by my mother. My daughters and I have been using that word. We use it at the close of a conversation, of a text, of a letter. My father, he's got the same tattoo. He flew over to Hawaii and got to ride back on ship with me to the States. So it's called a tiger cruise. Oh, and they let uh, family do it? Yeah. Do you have to be military to do that? Mm -mm. No. So that was cool. It was, yeah, it was, he said it's one of his most amazing memories that he's had. Well, it's kind of nice to come, your son's coming back from war, yeah. and you meet him in Hawaii, and the two of you come back together. It was a good bonding experience. Was it? You know, it, it gave me a chance to, because we're really close, you know, and, and for him to be able to meet me before I got back to to all of it, and, and be able to, to reconnect with, with him, and it, it made a big difference. Just the two of you Just, spending time. Yeah. And that's and you said he, he did get the same one. Yeah, we've got the same one. Uh, he he landed in the morning and we we were leaving that night, so he only had you know 12 hours, and we spent six of it in a tattoo parlor getting the same tattoo. <laughs> I think a lot of times when people get tattoos, they want to make sure that they have this enormous significance and this great meaning, and people do have tattoos. My tattoo that I got with my grandmother and my mom and my aunts and my cousins has enormous significance to me, but I think it's sometimes with tattoos, they don't need to have a significance. And people say, this is going to be on your body the rest of your life. You're going to see this every day. And... And? I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the tattoo. <laughs> it's going to be there every day. And so for me, I mean, I don't, I don't feel some, I love sloths, they're my favorite animal, I love learning about them, but in terms of how it reflects myself and my life, it's just something that I love. As I was developing the project, I saw what I was doing, and I thought, fine, I think this will have some impact in the community, but then I thought, maybe we could have a broader impact. And that broader impact, I was thinking to myself, if I want to show bias or to relieve bias, what if I got psychology involved? And I thought of Linfield. And I thought of their psychology department. And um, I sent an email to the chair of the department, Tanya Tompkins, and I just explained to her what I was doing. And I was asking her, I said, do you think that you would be interested in being a partner in this to um, help develop tools to measure bias or to measure change in bias. Well, Bill Miller emailed me as the chair of the psychology department and mentioned that he was engaging in a photo essay project called Inc. Being at a small liberal arts college, the idea of being able to 
think across disciplines, um, look at how art and psychology and maybe even perhaps mass communications can, can be involved. So I reached out to Meg, I reached out to um, Susan Civic um, and others to see if they might be interested in partnering. And so we're trying to answer sort of this overarching question of how might stigma toward people who have tattoos be reduced? Is it exposure to people? Is it knowing the narratives of why they themselves got their tattoos? I was having a really hard time coming to terms with my mother's death and getting the process of getting the tattoo and finally deciding what I wanted um, uh, to do for her and to to express my grief and mm -hmm. loss, um, it was the only thing that really made me feel better. W why ink? That it's ever... permanent. I can't get rid of it. It's always going to be with me, and that expresses the emotion that I feel every day. Mm -hmm. um, but also, because it's there, I don't have to think about it in the same way, because I can see it. Bill's show gives us this opportunity to both do a very naturalistic study, um, looking at people's impressions prior to the show and after the show, but then we can also do something here in the lab, which allows us to have more control over all types of factors that might play into prejudice against people with um, tattoos. I've done several photo essays in the past and I've always enjoyed writing. So for me, a photo essay is literally that. It's my photos with text. This time the text will be, for the most part, the people who wear the tattoos. Their words, their explanations. And I think those two together are going to create a tremendous photo essay of knowledge, and I hope uh, openness and communication, uh, and offset bias and stereotype. John people, I work as a nurse at the Veterans Hospital. The veterans have told me a lot of stories about the tattoos on their bodies. I think I really maybe never fully appreciated the significance of either the, the good times or the bad times and the significance of a lot of their tattoos. I think maybe I thought of it more as body art and not necessarily as an expression of deep feelings that they didn't have another way to express. So this has been really enlightening and um, really appreciated looking at uh, the exhibit today. So it's kind of enlightened me to that sense that you know there is more to a, to a tattoo than, than what I've kind of thought they were. <laughs> so I, yeah, I... I'm glad you did this. That I, I think they're beautiful. I think the stories about the tattoos are really nice. Yes. Very compelling. I really feel like I accomplished something. And that means more to me because it's not just me. It's affecting other people, involving other people, and really hopefully growing something. And so far all that's happened.